Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the African Exodus show. I'm your host, Tierney Cherie, here to you with a new video. Before we get started, if you have not and you want to subscribe to my Telegram channel, the link to that is down below. That is where you can get notifications anytime I post a video or any thoughts to share. That is also a better place to message me because I check that more often than my emails. So I definitely suggest that you subscribe to that channel. So this is the last installment of the Watcher series. As I said inside of a previous video, I've been noticing some comments from people as I talk about the Watchers, who are spiritual beings and a physical being in a way. These are beings that came and procreated with humankind. These are the ones who are spoken about in the book of Enoch and also in the book of Jubilees and also in Genesis 6. So these beings, fallen angel if you want to call them that some people call them aliens they are real and i also spoke about the fact that a lot of people were sending messages kind of like asking okay if i've been dealing with certain spiritual issues whether it's demonic or with these beings asking for some insight now i'm not an expert let me say that i'm not an expert on anything but i do have a little experience with these demonic beings and i do want to just give you all some of my experience being transparent and also just trying to help anyone who might need a little booster as far as confidence to know that you can tackle these things you do not have to be subordinate to them you do not have to be a victim you can be a conqueror as we've been called to by yah so but i want to first give some context about what they are so the book of enoch again tells us that these angels fallen angels called the watchers they came to earth pre procreated with humankind woman and they created what we call the nephilim these are hybrid human and alien watcher beings right so they created these nephilim now the nephilim were wiped out there was a flood the great flood that we know about as noah's ark the reason why the flood was happening, it wasn't just for the sin of man, although that was obviously a part of it, but it was also these beings, these Nephilim were oppressing humankind to the point where man started to cry out because of the oppression and Yah heard it. So that is the reason why Yah had to flood the earth. So that's where we're going to start right here. Enoch 15 verse 8. Now the Nephilim who have been born of spirit and of flesh shall be called upon earth evil spirits and on earth shall be their habitation evil spirits shall proceed from their flesh because they were created from above from the holy watchers was their beginning and primary foundation evil spirits they shall be upon earth and the spirits of the wicked shall they be called the habitation of the spirits of heaven shall be in heaven but upon earth shall be the habitation of terrestrial spirits who are born on earth the spirits of the Nephilim shall be like clouds. They shall oppress, corrupt, fall, and contend, and bruise upon earth. They shall cause lamentation. No food shall they eat, and they shall be thirsty. They shall be concealed, and shall not one rise up against the sons of men and against women, for they come forth during the days of slaughter and destruction. What this is telling us right here is that when the Nephilim were wiped out during the flood, their spirits could not go to heaven because they were not of heaven. And yet they were spirits that could not even descend into Sheol because they were not humankind. They had to basically stay on earth. So these spirits would roam the earth and they would be called what we call today demons. So they're evil spirits, they're wicked spirits. And something else you should emphasize, we should emphasize is that they oppress, it says, they corrupt, they fall, contend, and bruise upon earth. So if you're dealing with a demon you're dealing with something that's oppressing you that's what you have to look at your relationship to them they are there to oppress you they're not just there to trip you up they're literally there to lord over you to control you it also says again they'll call lamentation and it says no food shall they eat and they shall be thirsty so if you ever wonder why a demonic presence might go after you then understand that it doesn't have any satisfaction in life it doesn't have any quenching of its thirst and yet it's thirsty, right? It says they shall be concealed, okay? They're hidden, obviously, right? You don't look at someone and see that they have a demon. Well, usually, some people <laughs> you can kind of tell, but usually you don't see. It says, um, again, that they shall not rise up against men and against women, for they come forth during the day of slaughter and destruction, because ultimately we can master them. You can master them. That's the thing that I want to emphasize with this video. Now, let's read to some more characterizations about these demons, these spirits. So it says, 
So Matthew 12, verse 43. Now, when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places, seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my home from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept and put in order. Then it goes and takes along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the last state of the man becomes worse than the first. That is the way it will be also with this evil generation. That's very important to emphasize and to understand when you're dealing with these demonic spirits. They will take the smallest reason to come back. <laughs> That's what I'm going to talk about just from my own experience. They will take the smallest thing that you do. Once you cast them out, once you get rid of them and you've done your whole prayer and everything, you know, they're waiting to come back. They're waiting for you to trip up. They're waiting for you to lose focus in order to reassert themselves in your life. And as it says, when they come back, they come back with seven friends. They're not coming back to mess around. So this is what you have to keep in mind because we are in a battle for our lives. The scripture tells us we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities in high places. That means that we're, we, you have to be on it 24 seven. You don't get a break from fighting the spiritual battle. Some of us think I'm just going to pray today and then I'll take a break tomorrow. No, this is a war. And you could win one battle but lose the war because you were not keeping up on things and not watching what you do and what you listen to and what you allow yourself to engage in. If you're dealing with a spirit, there are essentially two ways that you could be dealing with it. One is you could have let open the door, meaning you could have engaged in something that is a door to evil. It's a door to wickedness that allows that spirit, the legal right to come in and do things to you. The other way though, it could be in your bloodline. Now, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. Every single person in every part of the world, we all have issues with our bloodline. Obviously, if you're from Yasharel, we have an issue with our bloodline because our forefathers rebelled against Yah. And because of that, we have to deal with the curses that were told to us before, told to our people before we committed them that would come upon us. We have to deal with that. That's a bloodline issue. Not to mention, also our people were joining with other spirits, were worshiping other Bel and Moloch idols. Those things also attach to your bloodline. So every single person, it doesn't matter if you are Yasharel, Gentile, whatever, every single person has issues with their bloodline. Now, when it comes to things with your bloodline, you can break it. But just because you're born into a certain family that has a covenant with a certain principality, that could mean that that thing has legal reason or access to oppress you. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what you should do if you are someone who has dealt with these things. Number one, you have to repent, even if it's a bloodline issue. You have to repent for the sins of your fathers, your, your mothers, your fathers who have engaged with these spiritual beings and given them legal license to basically come into your life. And some of us don't want to do that, but understand that if you're serious about getting rid of them, that you'll do certain things to ensure that you won't have to deal with them. After you repent, you also have to do a spiritual cleanse. You have to abstain from certain things. This is something that can be hard because there's certain things that I've realized could trip me up that don't seem like they're wrong. Like, for example, you might watch a certain TV show and you see this is acting, right? So yeah, you know, there's things that are sensual in this TV show, but it's just acting. I, I can watch it. But then you feel like you got tripped up. You could click an article, for example. This is something that I've realized for me is definitely a way to get tripped up is celebrity I idol, idol worship. That is a form of idol worship if you didn't know whenever you are watching blogs watching celebrities what are they doing what are they wearing that is idol worship that gives leverage that gives legal right for these things to enter in or to oppress you so you have to do a spiritual cleanse you have to identify what are these er areas they might not be written out like thou shall not click on tmz <laughs> but what are these areas that are tripping me up or that are causing me to be compromised. So that takes a lot of prayer and also just diligence, knowing yourself, understanding, okay, what caused this and what's messing me up. That's what it takes, I think, a lot of to in order to figure out what you need to cleanse yourself from. Obviously, you have to increase your prayer and devotional life. That's very, very important because you're going to need those spiritual weapons and you can only get truly cleansed by prayer in the first place. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to to block every single 
entrance that they have into your life. And that's only, again, going to come from devotion to Yah and actually coming before him, reading his word, knowing his word. Because as I said in Matthew 12, the spirit, they could they leave and they come back and they're like, oh, nothing has happened. Nothing has been done. It's still nice, clean house, just like I left it. Let's go in there. That's because there has not been spiritual fortification built up to block those attacks from them. So that's what you have to understand when it comes to doing things to protect yourself. That means putting your focus on other things that are spiritual in order to allow yourself to be protected from the spiritual wickedness that comes through these things. So I'll give you all a little story about myself. So when I was pregnant with my first son, I received a phone call from my mother-in-law. She had a dream and she told my husband and my husband came to me and the dream, I wrote it off as just some other dream till I really thought about it. The dream that she had was there was beings, spirits that were looking for me inside of the dream. And I didn't understand it because I was saved, you know, sanctified. So why would a spirit be looking for me? And she described a number of them. I don't quite remember the details, but her takeaway from this, and she's a very spiritual woman, and obviously she's a woman from the African continent, so she has a familiarity with certain things that we don't have a familiarity with in the West, is that there was a spirit husband. And if you don't know what a spirit husband is, essentially, whenever you've entered into covenant with a demonic presence and you have engaged with that presence, in a way where you basically, I would say, are in a relationship with it. That thing actually has a real covenant in the spirit realm with you. That's what she said in regards to me. When she said it, I said, <laughs> no way. Like, no way I would willingly, knowingly be in a relationship with a demonic presence. That was my takeaway. And for a moment, I was blowing it off until I thought about it and I started thinking about things in my life. Since I was a young child, I have had vivid fantasies and I never thought anything of it until this point because these are things that I know other people would do. That is, you watch movies. You know, I'd say it really started watching Disney movies, for example, and that's a reason why I think the Disney movies, you have to really look at what your child is looking at because the thing that they're selling to your child is a fantasy. Um, I think it started with Disney movies. You know, you see Pocahontas and John Smith. I know there's problems with that movie, but that was my movie when I was a kid. And you're taught to like fantasize about men and, and things like that. That is really the first time that I remember engaging inside of those types of fantasies. Now, I also had an imaginary friend. And I know this might get kind of weird for some of y'all, but that's true. I actually had one and I never thought to question it until this moment. But I remember I could visibly see this imaginary friend. It wasn't just something in my head. Like I remember his name and what it looked like. Um, and, you know, I told everyone, no, this is my, this is my, I actually called him my imaginary boyfriend. That's the other thing. I said, this is my imaginary boyfriend. And people thought it was cute. They just wrote it off. So that's what I started thinking about. And since then, I literally, since going through grade school, high school, college, have always had these types of fantasies. And I didn't think anything was wrong with it because I was not acting on the fantasies. It was basically like a story I would create in my head. Um, and it was a way to kind of forget about the hardships of life. You know, I don't want to deal with what I'm struggling with right now. So I'll think of myself being rich and, and having, uh, you know, this crush that I like, you know, things that might seem innocent, but I didn't realize at that time I was actually engaging in the spirit realm. So I, the more I thought about it, I knew like the conviction that y'all gave me that that was what my mother-in-law dreamed about. So I came and I told my husband and of course he felt a certain way because he, he never knew that this is something that I had been doing habitually. Um, we spoke to our pastor, we did prayer sessions. All's good, right? I'm free. I don't have to worry about it. You know, the spirit, the spirit husband thing is, is done with, right? No. <laughs> when I tell you, whenever you make those decisions, you have to understand you're basically getting ready to war. Because while before then, I never thought it was a big deal. Now I know it's a big deal because before it was just 
me doing this. I was just having these visions and these fantasies of things that I wanted to do with my life and there's nothing wrong with it. But I tell you not, I kid you not. In fact, let me back up a little bit. The actual time that I stopped having the fantasies was when I got pregnant. So that's the weird thing about it. I'd fantasized since up until I got pregnant. And for some reason, I could not fantasize. So that was something that was very weird. Like literally, I would try to go into that imaginative state whenever something like high stress was going on. And I wanted to not think about what I was going through. But there was a block. So that right there was very strange. But whenever I made those prayers and I said, I'm going to break these ties to these entities Things got really strange. I started seeing things in my room, standing over me. Um, there were dreams like um, my mother-in-law, she had a dream of a uh, some type of an imp like inside of the room. Um, and then things got more strange, physically fighting things in the night. That's something I never dealt with, actually physically being attacked. That's something that I started to deal with. And, um, it was something that threw me off because I'm like, man, like all this time I was just fantasizing. I thought it was just me in my head. I didn't realize that I was actually communing with a demonic spirit and it only got more intense. It became more physical. Um, and so at some point, you know, I said, okay, I'm going to really focus in on this because it's getting ridiculous now that I'm fighting these things and whatnot. And so I really did a long fast and, um, uh, you know, I'm not someone that like likes to fast. <laughs> I don't think anyone does, but I said I have to start fasting. So I did a fast. Um, I did my own spiritual uh, breakthrough type thing at home where I was listening to Dr. Stella Emanuel. If any of you remember her, a lot of people clowned her during the pandemic, but she has a really good teaching on spirit husbands. So I um, did a spiritual breakthrough on my own and seemed to be working. But the thing that I started to realize is that even though I stopped fantasizing in a romantic way, I would still every once in a while fantasize about small things. Like, let's say, like, I just wanted to get away and imagine, you know, something small and um, let's say, like, excelling in my my career or something like that or or being somewhere else other than where I was I thought that was fine because it was non-romantic therefore the spirit husband can't use that against me but literally those small things and that's why I said you have to identify your triggers those small things would basically send me back you know to square one which is why I emphasize to you again when the scripture says that when the spirits come back and everything's are things are left like it was they come back harder because what I remember at one point I was telling my husband, it's like they're waiting for me every time I go to sleep. It's like they're right there, like waiting for me to go to sleep so that they can trip me up with something, something weird in my sleep. So to summarize for you, I don't struggle so much as I did at that point, but I still have to stay vigilant, meaning I have to make sure I'm not doing things that could trigger any type of attack or open any types of doors. And that's what I want all of you to take away. It's not, in my opinion, a, hey, I prayed and I'm done. I could be free because those are familiar spirits. They're always waiting for you to have a moment of weakness. Now, I haven't felt a physical attack in a long time. That's, thank y'all, it's been for years. Um, but I do get tripped up in my sleep every once in a while. And usually it's because I did not pray. So I tell you, I pray every single night, you know, before I go to sleep. And if I forget, then and, and I don't have an attack, I'm always thinking, y'all, like, oh, I forgot to pray. Thank you. Um, but it's either I didn't, I forgot to pray, or I might have done something that opened a door. And while I haven't had a fantasy or an imagin imaginative state in a long time, um, what I have had is like times where you might engage, like I said, with like celebrity gossip or something. For some reason, that is a door that I've noticed leads to things happening in my dreams. So I say all that to say, being transparent, that you can fight them, but you have to understand you're signing up for a world, a, a, a war that's going to be daily. And it's not one that you can't excel at. It's just one where you have to be disciplined and understand that there are things that you can't do. Maybe even other people who follow, yeah, maybe other people who are in the way, um, Christian, Christianity, some would say, maybe other people can do certain things because they don't have that familiar spirit. But because you have that familiar spirit, you have to be extra vigilant. You have to be very prayerful and actually think through 
what you could be doing, what's your motivation of doing it. So for example, I do some, certain times my, I might click an article, but is my motivation idolatry? Is my motivation gossip or is my motivation because, okay, I have a news segment to do, so let me read this article. You have to be vigilant like that on every single thing you do. So that is my personal experience. Again, the biggest thing that has worked for me, number one, being diligent, watching everything I consume, Number two, praying every single night. And obviously, like I said, you have to be have um, time in the word, time with you to fill yourself so that when they come back, because they're not, in my opinion, you know, or at least in my experience, I don't want to say my opinion, in my experience, they're not going to leave you alone. They're always going to be waiting for you to trip up. But when they come back, they need to see that you built yourself up so much spiritually and you've been in, 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 in doing so many other things that they can't possibly get a leverage on you. Um, that, those are the things that has worked for me. To give you all some context, this is going back to the whole watcher thing. This article kind of lets you know the traits that people have that experience what we call alien abductions, but which I believe are watcher abductions. So five traits that could get you abducted by aliens. Certain traits may lead people to believe in an alien abduction. Experiences. It says, are you worried about being abducted by aliens? Many people worldwide have claimed to have been abducted by aliens, been taken against their will to an alien spacecraft or enclosed place, questioned or physically examined, and they remember these experiences either consciously or through methods such as hypnosis. And there's a reason why it has to be through hypnosis, because that puts you inside of a spiritual state that I believe it's actually the spirit realm is what they put you into a similar state that you can go into through the use of drugs or alcohol. People don't understand. There are states that we go into. Sleep is one of them where we're not inside of this physical world completely. Now it says, indeed, many of those people who claim to be alien abductees are seemingly sincere, psychologically healthy, non-psychotic people. So are their experiences real and their claims to have been abducted true. So let's just go through these traits. These are five traits that relate to people who say that they've been abducted by aliens. And I will say that this does not just apply to people who have been abducted by aliens. These are people who have had demonic strongholds. These could be the five traits that associate with demonic strongholds too, because we should know demons again are the same. Or you, you can enter into covenant with demons just like you could with watchers. They are of the same ilk. They're of the same kingdom, the same kingdom of darkness. So one Regularly experiencing sleep paralysis and hallucinations when awakening. Many people who have reported alien abductions suffer episodes of early morning sleep paralysis. On awakening from this paralysis, their terror gives rise to hallucinating hallucinations of flashing lights and buzzing sounds. Some experience feelings of floating around the room or seeing figures in their room. While many people interpret these post sleep paralysis experiences as dreaming. Some people interpret these experiences as seeing figures, ghosts, or aliens. How many of us have had this experience? I'll raise my hand and say, I've not, I've not had sleep paralysis, but I have had what they would call hallucinations. I don't believe they're hallucinations though. I believe that things, these are things whenever your mind is tuned to the spirit realm. A tendency to recall false memories. In an elegant set of experimental studies, McNally and colleagues found that individuals who claimed to have been abducted by aliens were prone to what is known as false memory syndrome. That is, alien abductees regularly reclaim regularly claimed to recall words, items, sentences, and memory tests that they had never actually seen before. If this false memory effect can be generalized to autobiographical memories, then individuals who claim to have been abducted by aliens would be twice as likely to falsely remember things that never happened to them than would non-abductees. I don't have experiences with this, so anyone who's had this, definitely give us some intel. Now, three, this is a very important one because... This is what I actually had dealt with. High levels of, of the absorption. Alien abductees also score significantly higher than most people on the mental characteristic known as absorption. Ab absorption sorry. This is a trait related to fantasy proneness, vivid imagery, and susceptibility to hypnosis and suggestion. 
Because of this, it is probably not surprising that many alien abductees recall their experiences under hypnosis, where memories of abduction can be induced through suggestibility, especially if the person leading a hypnosis session asks particularly leading questions about abduction. So, like I said, this is what I dealt with. I have since being a child had high levels of absorption, what they call it, high um, fantasy proneness. Um, I could go off into a fantasy and be literally like, particularly I remember times I could be in this fantasy world for hours. And next thing you know, oh man, where did time go? You know, if I didn't, especially if I didn't have anything like do, 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 like I have to do this today. I could easily go into uh, that type of vivid or fantasy state. And I know a lot of people probably do this. You don't understand that you are communing with spirits when you do this. So please let this be, let my story be a warning to you all. It's not something that is just innocent. You're actually going into the spirit realm. But New Age beliefs, let's talk about this. Being whisked up into spaceships by tractor beam or light sources is not something that happens every day, nor is it something that is easily explainable within our existing knowledge of physics. Similarly, being subjected to imaginative medical procedures requires a tendency to accept unusual and non-mainstream ideas. This is also a trait a trait possessed by alien abductees. They score high on measures of magical ideation and endorse new age ideas that encompass beliefs about alternative medicines and healing astrology from fortune telling. Such beliefs would certainly allow the individual to accept things happening to them that would be dismissed by existing scientific knowledge. So let's emphasize this new age beliefs, new age beliefs, um, beliefs that you can call things into existence the, the belief that you can enact positive thinking and all these things that we hear, vibrations. These people who engage in these beliefs, and it's very common and popular, many of you might engage in these beliefs, are known to have experienced these type of things. And new age, in my belief, is that many of us engage in it unknowingly, but new age is a philosophy that delves in the spiritual. So you are opening up a door Literally, if you are engaged in new age practices, you're opening up a door for demons to come in. And like I said, you might not understand that you've let them in. But let me emphasize with me, I did not know that I was allowing things to come into me until I decided to step away from it and started getting attacked. That's when I'm like, oh man, this was not innocent. This is not just a fantasy. This was actually something that was not just wrong, but I was all this time being paraded with demonic a demonic presence and didn't even realize it. So that's important to emphasize. Let's go to the last one. Familiarity with the cultural narrative of alien abduction. If a cultural phenomenon, alien abduction has entered folklore and the images and descriptions of aliens and their spacecraft have become familiar to many people. Alien abductees tend to be very familiar with this cultural narrative, which is one possible reason why their descriptions of aliens and their spaceships are so familiar, being fueled as they are by sci-fi films, numerous books about aliens and alien abduction. And that points to a question, why are we always... Uh, berated with with alien movies and alien talk, alien books like things that talk about these things um understand that the movie industry like i said like to me my probably my introduction into the vivid imagery was fantasizing from disney movies they introduce things in order to open our minds up to engaging with these entities so this again applies to people who are abducted by aliens. I believe every single thing inside of here also probably applies to people who are struggling against demonic principalities. So I hope that was not too much for you all. <laughs> I definitely want to hear your thoughts. If you have dealt with things similarly, I have a feeling that a lot of people have. So I'll tell you all to be respectful in the comments of different things people are dealing with. If people are transparent and sharing things, be very respectful. And I'm going to be watching the comments for that exact reason, because when you're test giving a testimony, you have to understand it's a, some fear could come with that or fear of judgment. Um, but I pray that everyone feel free of judgment in order to helpfully give some tips for other people who might be dealing with similar things. Um, so with that, I thank you all for watching. I will see you on the next video. We are not Africans. All right. We are possessed by spirits and demons. We have let another people's spirit 
take possession of our bodies and take possession of our minds. When we speak, it is not with our African voice. It is with the voice of that demonic presence that uses our lips to speak its own language. Yes. Yes, and we have to recognize this. We are possessed. And if we are to transform ourselves and to transform that the nature of our relationship with those who are our masters, we must engage in an exorcism and clear the devils out of our minds. And at this time, then, it'll pay you to, to read a little bit about demonic possession. And you have to be demonically, we have to be demonically possessed. Because if we talk about black on black violence, right. self-defeating behavior, self-destructive behavior, then we could not be possessed by a beautiful and wonderful God. We must be possessed by a demon. It's interesting to look at the literature on possession. We have uh, several, uh, a couple of types of possession. One is called a somnambulistic possession. Somnambulistic. Soma, in this instance, having to do with uh, sleep. You hear it in the word somnex. You know, ambulistic to move around, ambulatory, right? So we are talking about people who are what? Sleepwalking. Not a, you know, they're not awake, but they're walking around. The body is moving and it is walking in an organized fashion and walking systematically, but the person is still asleep. And in somnambulistic uh, possession then, the individual's original self has been repressed and displaced, and the spirit, and he identifies with the spirit that possesses him. And his eye and the spirit's eye are one and the same. And we have a lot of that here today. Where the spirit that has been implanted in us, we have taken to be us and we've identified with it. That is why in, in defending ourselves, we end up defending the people who rule over us. In defending our ego, we end up maintaining the social structure that has destroyed our ego to begin with. And you see it in our youngsters, who will fight and kill in the name of respect and fight because their egotistic uh, orientation has been insulted. And therefore, in defending their ego, they do not kill the people who destroyed their ego. They kill each other. And maintain the ones who destroyed them in the first place in power. And that's why the subtitle of my book Black on black violence was black self-annihilation in service of white domination. Mm. We are killing each other in order to maintain this system. Mm. We have let ourselves become possessed by a spirit such that when we become aggressive, we aggress against the self instead of those who are the source of our aggressive orientation. Mm. 